Hi, it's Linda of Yam Stamps and I'm here with a tutorial to show you how to do a watercolor background combined with the bokeh technique. So bokeh is the effect that you see where you see all the little white lights or circles on a background and they're out of focus. So what you're going to need to start is something to work on. Um, I have here shimmery white cardstock, so it does have a bit of shimmer to it. I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, it's also a little sturdier and it's got a bit of a coating on it, so it stands up to water well. You can also try watercolor paper and I'm also going to show you that one. Um, this is the just a sheet of watercolor uh, cardstock cut in half. So both of these will take the water very well. You'll need a brush, so just any kind of wide brush to apply the water and the reinkers. You'll need water. <laughs> and you'll need um, a couple of reinkers and then a couple other tools, a window sheet and circle dies or circle punches. I'm just going to use the brush and just apply water all over the paper. Just kind of make it nice and saturated. Then what I'm going to do is I have a palette here. I'll just work on here so you can see. Um, you don't have to have a palette. You can just use a plastic container lid. Um, an old stamp box, that kind of stuff. So I just put Knight of Navy reinker in there and I'm going to work with Tempting Turquoise as well. So a bit brighter color. And I'm going to get it all over my hands too. I'm going to pick up some Knight of Navy reinker. I'm just going to blob it on a few places. It takes incredible skill to do this background, I tell you. Okay. And then I'm going to rinse out my brush. You don't have to, but I like to, since the colors are going to merge anyways. And then I'm just going to put down some tempting turquoise in different spots. I'm going to rinse out my brush a bit again. And then I'm just going to kind of go over the places, see if I can get them to spread out a little bit more. So you can see, perhaps I didn't work quite fast enough because some of my blue got kind of blobby. So we can kind of cover that up a little bit. We'll go over it again, make it a little bit more washed out. So I'm making sure that all the way to the ends are covered so that I can use all the pieces or all the components of the cardstock. So then you're going to let that dry. Again, I'm going to wet this down. So what you'll find is probably the watercolor paper will take more water. My water already has a bluish tint to it, so hence the slight already wash. And I'm going to start off with the blue. The le sorry, the turquoise. I'm just going to wash a little bit. Make it a little bit wet. And then put some navy on. So what you can do if you think it's too dark, then just take some water and smush it out a little bit more. All right, and then we're gonna let that dry as well. So what I've done here is I've taken a piece of window sheet and I've die cut some circles. The smallest one didn't work for me because I shifted, so don't worry about that one. We won't worry about that one. But we have the um, larger circles. I didn't do really huge because I figured my projects aren't going to be that big. So I'll start off with the watercolor paper just because it's a smaller project and it's easier to show. So I'm starting off with my sheet and then Whisper White ink and a sponge. I just use quarter sponges usually. And I just ink up my sponge. And then I'll just place my template over the cardstock and just sponge the color into the circle. And you don't have to have totally opaque coverage. 
actually you don't want opaque coverage because that's not the way the technique works so you can see it's a very subtle technique I'm not sure if you can sort of see the circle there you can always go around the edges a little bit more to make them more distinct okay and then you're going to repeat that with the other circles And I usually find that a bit of a twisting motion applies more ink, so it makes it a little bit more distinctive. Okay. And you can overlap your circles. And then what you can do to add more dots and circles in is I just used um, a sponge dauber and that's a circle in itself so then you can just apply it straight on and you can do as many as you like or as few as you like. So it gives a lovely soft background effect. So there's the bouquet effect on the shimmery white watercolor piece. It is curled up a bit, but that'll be easily fixed. I can just turn it over and put it under something heavy for a little while, and it'll be cut up anyways for use on smaller projects most likely. Hope you enjoyed that. This is a fun technique to add some real dimension and interest to your cards. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'd love to see what you make. Please share it with me. Send me a picture. I'd love to see what your results are.